I'm Kent, and this is another Weekend Adventure Rides how-to. Today, we are going through and finishing the cylinder head. We will be installing the new valves by lapping them and making sure the valves and the seats fit perfectly together and there's no leakage. And then I'm gonna show you how to use the valve compressing tool to reassemble the valve springs and get all the keepers in there in the right positions. So don't go anywhere, let's get started on this right now. All right, we're gonna get started with the valve lapping process and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You are going to need a couple specific tools. First, a valve lapping tool, and it's just a piece of wood with suction cups on the ends of it for different sizes of valves. You're gonna need some valve grinding compound. Now you can get this at any auto parts store. And then some assembly lube. This is red line assembly lube. Okay, a clean pair of gloves, and then some new valves. These are Kibble White valves, performance valves. They are factory size. And then you're gonna need, obviously, your head. So we'll get these valves out of the package here. We're going to fit the valve to the suction cup. And if your surfaces are, surfaces are clean, this is much easier to do. So like this. Now, the reason we're doing this whole process is to fit the new valve to the seat on the cylinder head. Now, the reason that we do that is so that the valve closes and when it closes, it perfectly mates up with that surface and then we don't have any leaks or loss of compression. So, first thing we'll do is take our valve grinding compound and we'll just put a little bit along the edge of the valve. Enough to grind those. So if you see that there, just along the edge, so it'll match the seat. Now we're gonna use a little bit of assembly lube. We'll put that onto the valve stem. So it'll go down into the valve uh, guide and those two pieces won't be creating any friction with each other. So we'll slide that down to the valve guide. Okay, now we're gonna put our hands together like this over the top of the uh, valve grinding tool. And we're gonna put light pressure down directly in line with the tool, in line with the valve. We don't wanna move the handle up or down, just straight down. So we're gonna grind together like this and you can hear that grind. And as we grind, that sound is gonna get quieter. And here there's not as much grinding there, and it's not unusual for those to come apart, but we'll get that to fit back down there, okay? And as it quiets down, we're gonna lift up and put it back down, allow some of that valve grinding compound to fall back down into the valve seat. Okay, nice and quiet there. We'll go one more time. Okay, now we're gonna remove that, clean off our valve and our valve seat. This <clears throat> valve grinding compound, it's got little pieces of like coarse grit in it. And if you get it into the motor and into one of these valve guides, it's gonna cause a lot of damage. So make sure you're careful with not mixing your lubricant with your valve grinding compound. So after we get all these ground, we'll go back through and clean everything up really well, apply new lubricant so that we're not gonna cause any damage to our newly rebuilt motor. Okay, that looks pretty good. I can see one spot kind of here on this edge that it didn't grind quite all the way. So we're gonna do this process one more time. <clears throat> so again, new valve grinding compound. 
So when you're looking at the valve surface or the seat, you want to make sure that the grind, you'll be able to see where it's grinding, is smooth and the same width all the way around the valve seat. So down here, kind of on this edge, there is a spot that is a little bit narrower. So we're gonna go through and grind again and try to bring those two surfaces so that they're mating perfectly. A little more lubricant there, and then back down into the valve guide. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. We'll clean everything off again. Okay, that looks better. Looks like the seat's pretty even. So once we have that valve mated to that seat, we don't want to mix it with the other valve. So this exhaust valve is going to go back into that seat until we're done grinding all of the other valves and then clean everything up, making sure that we mark which valve goes where. And then we're gonna reassemble our valve components and our springs. We'll go over how to do that. So let's get the rest of these ground. Now we have all of our valves lapped and everything is fitting correctly. So what we're gonna do is go through and clean this off one more time. Then we will be assembling our valve springs and seats and all new uh, seals in here. So we'll get started on that process now. Okay, so we've got a new pair of clean gloves, a new clean microfiber rag, and we're just gonna go through and double check all of our valves are very, very clean. All of the grinding compound is off the valve seats and the stems. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of standard motor oil here motorcycle motor oil and put some of that on the valve stem here. We really don't want to cause any wear to the valve stem or the valve seat or the uh, valve guide. All right, looks good there. Move on to this next one. All right, there we go. Now we can take this down from here. Place it on a rag on its side. All right, we are ready to rebuild the valve spring assemblies. So we've got all of our valves in there in the correct places. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is put our oil seals in. Now, don't be like me and go through and film this video and put them all together and then forget to put your <laughs> oil seals in. So we're doing this again. All right, now these just snap on over the top of the valve guides there. And then the valve pushes through. So we'll put one on each of these. And these were included with the valves from Kibble White. All right. That's gonna help keep our valves in place as well. Okay, now we can start the assembly process. Now you're gonna need your um, spring compressor here. Now if you look at your valve springs, you'll see that one side is more tightly bound than the other side. And it's the same way on both springs. So you can see on this one, tightly bound here. That's gonna go towards the bottom. So we're gonna put our springs together like that. Put our first one on, seat it all the way down in there. Then we'll put our spring retainer on. And finally fit our, let's finally fit our spring compressor over the top of that. So we'll tighten that down. And don't be afraid to really tighten these springs down. That's gonna be easier to put the retaining clips in. So you want them to be kind of even. So we'll tighten it down at least below the line or the uh, round indent on the valve. So that's where the keepers are gonna hold on. Now put your keepers in, you want the skinny edge down and 
you can see that there's a rounded piece on the top of it that will fit into this uh, indent on the valve. These aren't the proper terms for these things, I just don't know what they're called. So a pair of small needle nose pliers will be your friend for this process. Also don't lose your retaining clips, they're really hard to find. Okay, we got our first one in there. This takes a fair amount of patience. These little clips don't want to uh, cooperate. But if you have the valve centered in that spring retainer, it will go in there a little bit easier. You may have to tilt it like this or tighten your spring down a little bit more. There we go, that one fell down a little bit easier. And there we go. Tedious process, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. Okay, so when you have that first one in there, check that the valve stem itself is sticking up about 3 16 of an inch. The keepers and the spring retainer are completely level with each other, and the clips are even. So we'll move on to the next one now. You made it to the end, and here we have the finished XR250 head, like brand new, with those aftermarket kibble white valves in there. So, if uh, you enjoyed this, give it a like, don't forget to subscribe, and then follow along because next week we finally have the tools to finish up this lower end rebuild. So, next week we're going to go through replacing all of the engine seals and bearings and then mating those two case halves up again. So uh, check us out next week. All right, we'll see you guys next time.